Good morning, everybody. I think it's uh, March 5th here today. So we're actually, uh, we're in town. And uh, again, Mike is trying to look at all of his options. I'll be looking at some different RV campers today as well. I was, whenever I did the last video, I don't know, that was later February or something like that. Anyway, um, also have been with the realtor in some small towns. Uh, I've been looking at some duplexes and some fourplexes, like, you know, stuff that's built in the 70s and 80s because there's nothing new built anymore. Nobody builds anything new in a small town because there's zero resale value. So looking at all that, the pros and cons, weighing it out, because, you know, anything older that you're going to buy, any older house, uh, duplexes or anything like that, it needs work. You know, most of the time it hasn't been kept up. Uh, you need flooring, you need... You, in some cases, you need to update the windows, uh, the roof, the furnace, the hot water heater, um, the drywall in places to be cracked needs paint. Um, that's without looking at the plumbing. Most of the time, the plumbing needs to be updated. The valves are seized. Like, there's always something, right? There's always something. And we, we looked. The duplexes that we looked at were actually on crawl spaces. Um, then you're looking at, you know, what the flooding potential is. Looking at some older homes as well, and then the basement walls and stuff are cracked. Maybe there's rodents in the homes. There's always something, especially when you go older, you guys, there's always something. I'm no housing expert by any means. I'm barely an expert at anything, but uh, I'm just trying to educate myself uh, like any of you guys probably would. Just trying to look at all my options, you know, what's new, what's new worth? What's a new stick build worth? Well, I know what a new stick build worth is, and it's massive especially when you have to get all the trades to come out to a small town. In fact, it's actually, it's not economical at all. So that one's done, that one's out of the question. We know what that is, stick builds out of the question. And then, okay, so right now we're in a modular home. And uh, like I actually live in a mobile home, um, modular home, mobile home, I'm not sure what the difference is. Modular maybe looks a little bit more like a house, I have no idea, maybe they, I have no mobile home is typically a little longer, slender looking. Either way, we're in a modular home. And modular homes, mobile homes, they typically keep the value because you can take them off their basement or you could pop them off their... If it was moved in, it can be moved out. So they typically hold their resale value a little better. So that's a pro. Um, and again, like anything, even in, your, in the equipment world, you have not so well built modular mobile homes also not so well built campers rvs and then you have really well built ones and again you typically in most cases you pay for what you get for in and get in most cases not always but in most cases now everything that is built has to be built to canadian code so you know it's going to have two by six walls it's going to have a certain amount of insulation it's going to have a certain amount of insulation in the floor because these have to be insulated in the floor there's a you know, that used to be a big uh, insul bag of insulation underneath the floor. And then all your uh, sewer pipes and everything would be in that. But again, everything has to be built to code. Now, the finishing is typically where you're looking for. You know, you're seeing how well can you see the drywall? Like, do you see screws in the drywall? Um, how well has the flooring been done? How, how are things cut out? You know, it's a little, <laughs> right? Windows a window. These are all dual pane windows. But anyway, we're in a we're in a particular module home that's 800 and I think it's 22 by 22 by 38. So it's like 800 and change square feet. Dishwasher. So not bad, but I was looking at some other homes because they have a few out here. They have a few. That one's more like a mobile home, but they have a few. And some are pretty cracked, like the drywall's really cracked because they move them in here. They build them and then they move them in. And like sometimes the places will be cracked across the roof, drywalled. And, and that happens, and that happens. And typically, anytime you're gonna move a modular home or a mobile home, I don't know what the difference is, you guys probably already tell me by now, but 
Typically, there's always going to be cracking on a move because you know the house is shifting, right? You're going down a highway, probably doing 60 to 80 kilometers an hour, and the house is moving. It's flexing. And drywall, to my knowledge, again, I'm not a builder, doesn't like to flex. <laughs> and when it flexes, it cracks. So it, now it really just comes down to how well can they touch up your house. So in here, I was wondering where they put this. There's your furnace, air exchanger, hot water heater, and this would go right out the bottom, so that way you can bring your services up. And then again right here, this would be where your main water line, I would assume, comes up. Oh, this... panel you kind of have a bit of a furnace a heater going in here but this is the only one that's actually heated the rest of them out there are not and uh, I don't think it's really good for homes to be not heated I don't know I don't know anything about this but there's definitely way more cracks in those ones but this would only be for a stackable dryer and washer again not the end of the world this would be the there's two bedrooms. This is a two bedroom, one bathroom. This is the biggest bedroom. Small little closet right there. Here's your bathroom. Um, shower. Little, I don't know what that is for. I was thinking for food, but it's a bit of a walk to your kitchen. I do like how big the window is. Like the window comes pretty low. I do like that. This bedroom is actually the smallest. It's actually only nine feet square. It's not super big. Like if you were going to put a queen bed in here, I think you're going to take pretty much the whole dang room. <laughs> you're going to have to, you're going to walk around like this probably. To get around, which is not the end of the world because you're only sleeping in these things. Little closet. One little crack. That'd have to be touched up. That's actually not bad. It's not the best drywalling I've seen, but again. To screw. So these modular homes, they're mass produced. Um, like they actually are have an assembly line. So, you know, versus if you're gonna get one custom done who takes, you know, a long time to build a house, your workmanship quality might be a little bit better. But I'm not here to say one is, this is best, this is not good. I'm just here to look at, for me, what is the most economical? So something like this, which actually isn't bad, two bedroom, one bathroom, 800 and some square feet, is gonna run me probably about 190,000 dollars delivered with screw piles, make sure it doesn't blow away. Like if it just, they just put it on blocks and screw it down to make sure you know, it doesn't move off of its blocks and skirt it, because there'll be skirting under here. I got no example to show you that, but that's not bad. And obviously it only goes up, the bigger you want, the more money, you could spend 300,000 if you wanted to. Now, if you wanna, you wanna bring in a, like a more, a custom built home type deal, you could still move those. I've got prices on those. You're gonna be in more or less $700,000 range. So again, finishings is a big deal. Big cost. How you want to? How you want to fit? You want a taller roof? More money. You want coarse countertop? More money. You want better paint? More money. You want better flooring? More money. You want? It's just all more money. <laughs> so basically, I'm gonna be like 200 grand all day long to bring in something that I could put a couple people in, or you bring in a four bedroom. For three hundred and fifty grand, 
and then put everybody in. But then you go back to not everybody always, you know, you work with each other. Like my brother, I work with my brothers, right? I love my brothers. Half the time I want to kill them because, you know, that's just family. <laughs> you know, I work with my brothers all the time. It's great. It's actually awesome to work with family. But if you, if you work with family, you know. If you don't work with family, then you just don't know. But it's nice going home and not hanging out with your family because I work with them every day. So it's the same as for guys. So you could maybe bring in two of these and then at least you can pair some guys or something like that. But we're going to go look at some campers. And campers is not a long-term goal. Campers is like a band-aid. We're just throwing a band-aid on because, you know, you got some seasonal guys that are coming in. You know, maybe, maybe you hire some guys who are literally just coming to help you seed or harvest. So they're coming for one month in the spring and they're coming for one month in the fall. Then a camper is perfect because these places are for full-time guys or long-term seasonal guys, right? But it's not really economical to go and build or move in a bunch of these places for guys that are just coming in for 30 days and then they're piecing out again. Then you bring another guy in for 30 days and your turnover is high because typically they're always the different crew. Then campers because that's always a summer thing. Campers are probably the best bet for that. But I also have to have both. I need some good full-time. Seasonal. Seasonal. What's this? I don't know if that's just cut funky. Anyways. It doesn't matter. It's just that I'm slightly OCD, so little things do bother me a little bit. I just gotta get over it. I just gotta get over it. Get down with it. Let's take a walk outside here. So vinyl siding, again, siding is a big deal. If you want that cement board, more money. So this is what it would look like under there. And then the skirting comes down from here, goes right down to the ground. It's probably like that thick. It's not insulated because this is already insulated. So this is, this is all insulated and then they board it up. There should be a big bag of insulation in there. And then they'll literally set it on blocks like this. They'll level it and they'll set it on blocks like this and then they'll put piles down to hold it down and then they'll skirt it in and then you run your sewer lines, uh, above ground obviously you would run them just like this and then you wrap them with heat tape plug them in so that way you know the water doesn't freeze as it's flowing out down into your septic tank and the same with your water line wherever your water line comes up it's all heat taped that's the realities of mobile homes and modular places that you're that's not going on crawl spaces or basements that's the reality and then obviously we get cold up here it can get down to minus 40 your water can still freeze up even with heat tape and insulation wrapped around it. But it doesn't typically happen very often. You get maybe it freezes up maybe once a, once a winter on that real cold day. So yeah, that's kind of it in a nutshell, you guys. outside tap for your water and then obviously if you want to build a, or not build you want to buy say an older home so say you build an older home for or I keep saying building say you uh, you want to buy you know something that's built in the 70s or the 80s well they only have two by four walls so now you still don't have the insulation value so your your heat cost is going to be more money so you got to calculate that and then you're still building an older home or I say building one more time, guys. <laughs> Buying an older home, and with that, still comes its own problem. Gotta go back in where it's warm here, because it's actually cold outside. Step on this. Definitely a lot warmer in here. So say you buy an older duplex built in the 70s for a hundred grand and then throw another 50 to 80 grand in while you're already at the same price as this. Now, I typically always lean a little newer because I don't like fixing 
older problems. Not that new can't have problems. Anyway, that's it in a nutshell. I got a bunch of more of these to check out. Might go to another city, check out some more. And I know I'm not looking to spend a pile of money here. I'm not looking to take the cheapest of the cheap either, but I would definitely be more in the economic range. Because like I said, I'm renting a place that's costing me $25,000 a year just to rent one place. So, and again, it's better to build or have something, put your own money into that than give it to somebody else. So, anyways, I'm gonna let you guys go. I've yapped long enough. Talk to you later. All right, we're just in a different, different, uh, different house, and actually in a different city. Some cracks here. More there. This is a. You said this is a three bedroom. Um, yeah, three bedroom, yeah. two bathroom. Yeah. Few more cracks here. This one's definitely got lots. Oh, yeah. Oops, sorry. Way across. More beer. I don't know what this is. They didn't even mud this. This didn't get mudded. But this is a bedroom. Bathroom, bedroom, kitchen, crack here. And here. This is the master bedroom, I guess. I won't take up any more of your time there. Round two, we're in the a 16 by 60, so 16 feet wide by 60 feet long. This would be the master. I can't remember what this stuff is called. This isn't drywall, this is like paneling, I think. I guess the pro to it probably doesn't crack like the drywall does when you're moving them around. One more bath. This is two bedroom, two bathroom, right? I think so. Yeah. Okay, I'm cold, I'm ready to go when you are. All right, so uh, yeah, I couldn't do a whole uh, videoing and uh, talking to you guys because we were being toured. I was being toured the places, so uh, out of respect, I didn't video a whole lot. But um, anyway, so yeah, this is just a different place. We're actually in Regina right now. And uh, these would be more your mobile homes because they're a little narrower. Like that one over there is like a 16 by 70 or something like that. And uh, these ones have more of that, uh, it's, it's like a panel, it's like a panel like I, I pointed out there in the video. I prefer more drywall, but drywall cracks. These ones, that one with the drywall had a ton of cracks. Probably the most cracks I've ever seen. So, it's kind of concerning as well. But anyways, so this place is actually quite pricey. Uh, you know, you're probably 200 to 225. 200 for sure, and that doesn't count any moving. It doesn't count any piles, that doesn't count, any skirting, that's all extra. The other place, all that stuff was included. So, I don't think this would be our, I, like I said, I'm just trying to educate myself. And also these bag, these ones actually have bags underneath. Maybe this one does. They're not fully enclosed yet. Oh, this is your insulation bag, but it can get holes in it. Mice can get in there. So, like, right there. 
where that last one that we looked at was all it stuck plywood up there and closed it all. So yeah, I guess we're gonna keep moving on, guys. Oh yeah, right, I forgot. Um, I know, I just, I just don't ever go away. <laughs> but I know he has a lot of questions about, Mike, why don't you just build a shop and build a living space in it, you know? That's a really good question. And to answer it in short, that will not be an option for us. It is a huge liability. Talk to my insurance people, I've talked to my lawyers, lawyer, and uh, it's a huge liability for us. We're just not gonna go down that road. I can't have other people's kids and family running around our farmyard. Someone gets run over, someone gets hurt, someone, whatever, slips on some oil in the shop while they're walking out. Um, and even if you trust, and that's not even talking about sticky fingers. You might, you, you might trust your crew, but they still live lives they still gonna live you know they're working weekdays taking weekends off having family and friends down um, have some drinks and they're literally living in your shop or beside your shop or on your farmyard and now all of a sudden you know someone grabs 20 liters of gas or something you know oh, I'll tell Mike about that don't worry about it you know whatever what well, could be waiting you could trust you could trust the heck out of your crew right doesn't mean that you trust everybody that they're hanging around with so it's just a big liability uh, I don't want people living on the farm site um, and I do not want people's uh, children or family or friends just showing up whenever, hanging out with whoever. It's just a big liability. We're not going down that route ever. So we will live, they, people who work for us will live off site. That's just how it will be. We don't even want to, I don't, I don't want chapel running around the farmyard and uh, my older brother doesn't hit, want his kids just running around the farmyard whenever nobody lives on site nobody not even the brothers so it's a big liability it's dangerous and we're just not gonna go down that route now another question is echo trailers oh I see they're coming from behind us echo trailers hold on here hold on we'll have to talk about echo trailers later <laughs> I guess we can't record on their uh, location unless they're literally there with us so it is what it is. I will catch you on the flipper.